Arthur Halloran, uh, CEO of Trillion Energy, and we have a large gas project offshore uh, Turkey that we're developing right now. Arthur, it's been a while, been a while. You've been out solving problems by the looks of it from what I can read. Um, let's, just for the sake of like a new audience coming in here as a, and, and a new entry point for, for them, and obviously to make sure that your current shareholders feel a bit better about all, all of this, let's explain what, you, what you've got. We're in Turkey. What are you focused on? So we have an offshore gas field, offshore Turkey in the Black Sea. And in about 2019, we purchased a old field that had um, three tripods, a platform gathering system, onshore facility, uh, gas fields that were produced and gas fields that were discovered but not produced. And in 2022, 2023, we drilled from the platforms and we tagged into um, some of those pools and put them on on production. Right, but then we had a problem. That's correct. So these are these wells were um, first of the kind in Turkey and so on. They're long reach directionally drilled wells, and we use four and a half inch tubing. The legacy wells use two and three eighths, and with four and a half inch tubing, the wells produce very well, but at around two million. Two and a half million cubic feet per day, they stopped. They had uh, water loading. Which means what? So what happens is, is that the water fills up the, um, the production tubing and the weight of the water then pushes against the perforations where the gas comes in and it doesn't allow the gas to go from the formation into the borehole. Right. So the net, the net effect of that, the stuff that investors care about is you went from two bucks to two bucks 50 down to today's price of nine cents, right? We, we, the g- game over. Or was it? Well, so the gas is still there. The facilities are still there. Everything is still in place. And the easy fix was, but it took us a while to do some studies and so on. It's just changed the tubing size. So we went from four and a half to two and three eighths, which uh, was what used in the past. And the, the big stumbling part initially was they always thought we needed to get a jack-up rig to pull the tubing and change the tubing and so on. and um, But we have sidestepped that, and we actually brought in a small snubbing unit. And the snubbing unit now is stripping in the, um, the smaller tubing size. And it's very simple. It's, it's like trying to suck up coffee in a um, you know paper towel roll versus a soda straw, right? So... That's the same kind of thing, the gas pressure pushing the, the water up. And so right now, currently, we have three of the wells done, and we're waiting on weather now, and uh, we've already started to get some uh, some good uh, responses. Okay, you, you've done three wells. What, what's that actually mean? Is it working or is it not working? There's two aspects of it. One is there's a technical aspect of it, and then the other one, of course, is the most important, which is production. And so the the... This this was hasn't been done before, and so we were concerned that well, ever anywhere in the world, maybe not everywhere in the world, but definitely in Turkey and in one of the wells okay. that we just did, West Akachoka, uh, anywhere in the world has not been done. This is the first time, and what it is is you can imagine if you're you're pushing a three and a half, three point eight kilometer, two and three eighths inch tubing, and there's a large horizontal section, the friction and the weight causes a big issue and then right but we got over that by doing something different again and the snubbing company that we have used has never done this but what it is is we put air into the the tubing and then we put in like a valve type thing and then when it goes into the horizontal section and we fill it with fluid it floats and therefore it reduces the friction and it's successful so we know we can run in, because we already have now, run in the smaller tubing size, and they call it a velocity string. And now um, the first well, Akachoka 3, we went from about 2 million cubic feet to 2.6. And I just checked again here today, and so the last four or five days has stayed at 2.6 million cubic feet per day. But we think we can increase that by, because right now the um, intake for the tubing is below the perfs, and if we pull it up, maybe above the perfs, we can potentially increase that um, that production. And the whole goal of this 
it's not so much to increase the production if the wells are already producing two to two and a half. It's to stabilize the production so it doesn't stop at two to two and a half, so that it will produce for three or four years. But we do have some of the wells like Gulich and um, West Akachoka, which are only producing a couple of hundred MCF per day. And so when we do the velocity strings, the smaller tubing size, we're hoping to get two to two and a half million cubic feet per day. And and these are definitely a game changer in our revenue uh, statement. Okay, so, so so some holes about stabilizing and others about increase, well, significantly incre- increasing. Um, there's, there's so much I want to talk about, but um, I just want to make sure we've got, got everyone still listening to us and still on board. Uh, the, the, the snubbing unit, I mean, just explain exactly what that is, because I, I don't want to lose people getting too technical. So it's a very small um, contraption. It's like, we'll show some pictures of it. So, you know, so it actually sits on top. I'll put some up now. I might yeah. even put a video up now for so people to look, at, look okay. at it while you talk over it. So what does it do? It actually sits on top of the wellhead. And then it has a small hydraulic, and so when the tubing is in lengths, and it's like a almost like a mini derrick. So you thread the tubing in, and then it pushes it down, right? And it feeds it in. Then you you feed another in another tubing strength in, and it it pushes it down, almost like a drilling string. But there's no rotation or or anything like that. And the other thing that hasn't been done before in this area is that we actually left the wells flowing. And that's the important thing about a snubbing unit. We didn't want to kill the wells because that's going to, we worry about causing issue with the reservoir. And so this equipment is small enough that we can use the crane on the platform and also the tripods to pick it up and put it on the wellhead. And it then allows us not to have to use a jackup rig because you can imagine the weight of you know, 3.4, 3.8 kilometers of this two and three eighths inch uh, steel, the crane can't do it. So you need a lot of hydraulic push. And that's what the little snubbing unit does. The, I'm just saying, it, when, when, people, when people think about these these sorts of programs, they're used to sort of seeing these off, off, offshore rigs. Um, are you going to have to get there at some point or are you going to be able to make some savings initially on how you get after this this gas? Yeah, so with the snubbing unit, what that tells us is that we can do now recompletions, we can do pump changes, we can do tubing changes without the rig, whereas in the past they always used the rig. And so our goal right now is to get this production on, produce new revenue, and and pay off some of our invoices and get a good sound financial um, foundation but at the same time, like you mentioned there, this asset has got a lot of other gas. And so we're not spending money on it, but we're looking, we're doing studies, we're contacting the company, how we can potentially drill other wells from the platforms without using a jack-up rig, which right now is about $130,000 a day. And one avenue is a barge-mounted rig, which they did use in 2011 on the original South Akachoka well, but they lost it. And the reason why they lost it was their their mud pumps were too small. And so we look at it and we can say, okay, we can use the same kind of drilling, um, you know, rig and so on, but with a larger mud pump. And all it really does is it just pumps out the, the fine uh, rock pits. And so that way it doesn't get jammed in it. So that's one way, another way is we're looking at coil tubing, re-entering some of the um, other boreholes, milling a window, and then not going very far out. And so that one we're studying a bit because there's a few issues, but there always was issues for the other stuff we've done, so we always use new technology. And another avenue is using a um, a platform-mounted rig. So on the platform, you, we can't do that in the tripods, but the tripods we can use a barge. And a barge mounted rig, you're looking in the order of with all the other stuff, twenty five to thirty thousand a day versus a hundred and thirty, right? Right. Okay. So we're, we're looking at that because the idea is we're going to have another phase in the future, and we need alternatives that do not um, 
involve a jack up rig. Okay, so you're obviously very cost conscious. Look, you've got to be, right? You, you've gone from, like, say, you know, well over two bucks a share down to less than 10 cents a, a share. A um, lot of value destroyed, maybe a lot of upside investors out there. So this kind of cautious approach to um, how you move things forward, I'm intrigued by because. It's not like you, you you found dusters. You knew the gas was there. There's a technical problem you're trying to solve. It's taken a year to get here. So let's let's talk about moving from here forward. The gas that you're that that is showing at the moment. Are you selling that? Are you able to monetize that? Is that bringing revenue today? That's correct. Yeah, we 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 get about. Um, it used to be about ten dollars, but now it's about nine dollars and ninety four cents in MCF and. Um, Every little sniff of gas that we produce is purchased because Turkey imports 98% of the other gas. Right. So are you producing revenue today? That's correct. Yeah. Again, so we we started the perforation program here about three months ago. So it was 120 days. And actually, since that time, we've produced probably an average from predominantly only two wells, 4 million cubic feet per day. So for the last three months, and including our also our oil revenue, we've we've made a revenue of about over a million US a month. That's that's our percentage, and that's for two of the wells. And we still have another four wells that if we can get up to say two million cubic feet per day, even if we only manage to get three of the wells, our percentage will give us another million. And we're doing that right now with the velocity strings. So that means we'll now we'll be at two million. U.S. revenue a month, which is 24 million revenue a year, that, and that's U.S. and that's our interest, which is not not too bad. It's really good. It, well, it's, it's good to have revenue it gives you options, and, I, and I'm, I'm intrigued by those options because at the same time, it's not a bunch of money, right? Because it's revenue; it's not it's not kind of net or pr- profit in a f- uh, free cash flow. So, what do you what do you how do you spend that money this year? as you're producing it. You're going to pay some bills, um, so you pay some bills, but how do you generate future value, future revenue? How do you allocate this capital? Yeah, so, I mean, you, you bring up a good point is that we have a lot of, um, you know, creditors that are looking and they're just looking to make sure that we have a stable production and they're not really worried about what, you know, rate is, if it's like, you know, two million a day, a day per well, or two and a half, or one point five. They want to see that see that stable production, and they're waiting for us to come to them with a payment plan. And we've already started to pay some of it. So a percentage of that is going to go um, towards that. But then you have other things that are very low cost. So an example would be the perforations and the velocity strings and the snubbing unit, all together costs about $2.7 million, and we pay half of that. TPAO pays the other half. So we're getting some good bangs for the the, the dollar. And TPAO, are, that's our, our partner, and they're the Turkish Petroleum Company. They see that the what we're doing with the velocity strings in um, SASB, and they have um, a more mature field, gas field at the Trace Basin, and so the production's a bit lower. And they are now going to put in 1.6 inch um, production tubing, which is again a velocity string. And um, again, that's to lower to be able to produce at a lower lower rate. So when we see that, we we look at you know potentially we have two legacy wells. Well, one of them is Akachoka Five, another one's on the tripod. That for like a hundred thousand dollars each, we can put in um, these smaller uh, tubing production tubing, velocity strings. We don't need the snubbing unit. We can just use the crane on the platform or the rig, I mean, or the, um, the tripod. And even if it only gives us like half a million or a million cubic feet per day, that's still a really good uh, re- recurrent return for the amount of uh, money that we are putting in. Okay, so pardon the pun, but right now the plan is steady the ship. And by that, I mean your balance sheet, um, the revenue, the share price. Obviously, hopefully, you'd hope for a little reaction here from the marketplace. But it's it's kind of let's get back to a solid footing is what you what you think you're going to be able to do with what you currently got. And obviously, maybe some of these more mature fields might release some you know small small amount of revenue 
for you guys as well. Um, and before we kind of get on to, you know, Blue Skies and, and what, what you do from here, in terms of your reputation with your partners, do you, look, I get it. Drive for oil is tough. I've been involved with projects, $100 million holes, and it's come up a duster. It's, it, it can be scary out there. Um, but your reputation with your partners is with this new solution. Um, they're going to want some time to actually understand does the steady state production um, can continue if there's no, you know, serious, de- you know, um, declining, declining profiles or anything like that. So, how are you managing those relationships? How are you working with them? Yeah, so like our partner TPAO, they again, they are a really good partner. You know, we say they're a bit, a bit slow in making their decision, but they're not really. They're just making a good decision because they have, um, they're stewards of the. the taxpayers money there and they want to make sure they get a, a good return and they're actually happy with the wells that we've already drilled because in you know i mean the production wasn't wasn't a great and it basically died but they knew the asset was still there they knew that there was potential solutions and so when we came up with these solutions they'd never done velocity strings before nor a snubbing unit and now they see that it works and so our technical reputation is um, is good with good with them, but what they do is they always work things out. They want the details because they want to make sure that whatever money they spend in SASB, they get a return for it and they get their money back. And so they already got a large percentage of their money back in um, for the well drilling. So they feel for a small incremental investment with the velocity strings and so on, there isn't an issue and. You know, with the perforations, we already got um, payback when the perforations, I believe it was in the first 14 or 18 days. So that that was already paid back by the, the gas production. Right. Okay. And obviously you hung on to, um, to the team to be able to do this during, during this quite quite difficult uh, time because obviously there's raising cash, nigh on impossible in, in this market. Um, you've had a kind of technical failure, um, not exactly encouraging um do you, do you feel that with this revenue that you've got now you're and the plan that you've got going forward you're going to be able to i guess move the company forward at a pace which one demonstrates your ability to solve problems um and and to not just kind of just be a small insignificant gas flower uh, in, in the market. You know, are you going to be putting all that money back in the ground? How, how does it work? What should people? What are people buying into going forward? Yeah. So the reason why I picked up this this project and so on is because of the the amount of gas there is at SCSB. And so part of the part of the the conversation is that there was the seismic that was done before, and we had it reprocessed. And we now have it, and we're remapping it, and so on, and you know, with more um, AVO and other anomalies on it, so we can see there's a whole bunch more more gas there. But you have to be, you have to do it um, economically, and and um, I wouldn't say cheap, but you know, really careful with your dollars. And right now, my reputation is um, in the toilet, and. Um, and the company people are looking at, and they're saying that we can't we can't really do anything. But when you look at the whole project, the only error that we made was the wrong tubing size. We used four and a half instead of two and three eighths. And part of our model was that as we were doing the project, we would generate gas that would generate revenue, and it would be a self-funding project. Well, of course, when the wells loaded up and quit producing that revenue stopped right and so we don't we didn't have that and now we're at a stage where we're now reinitiating reactivating that um, gas production and that revenue and so we're going to get to a point where we should have been before and i think that we're going to need about i'd say a month two months three months of stable production and the investors will look at that and say okay now they're starting to believe that story and then at the same time, um, handling our debt and our um, some of our outstanding invoices, and then now slowly putting the money back into the the 
reserves that, that are sitting there. So to be example, like the 1.6 inch uh, tubing, we're also looking at, um, you know, potentially water water handling pumps like PCP. And we already have some purchased and so on, but that'll be after we have stable production for two or three months. So we want to exit this year with about 25 million US a year revenue. And we want to have, be in the order of like 100% production of about 10 to say 14 million cubic feet per day. And then in the year 2025, we start doing the cheaper, maybe not with such a big, um, you know, hit, but it's we'll be slowly adding to our bottom line. And now we're starting to generate revenue that we can then turn around and say, okay, let's have a second project. And instead of, um, you know, looking at some of the pools, we say, oh, could we have to put another tripod there, which we're looking at, you know, 20, 30 million. We're looking at, can we put more drilling slots on the platform? Like, can we put another two or three? And we're looking at all the um, alternatives that we can do. And so the goal is once we feel comfortable and once the investors feel comfortable and, and, and we have our reputation back again, let's start, in, let's start to do some uh, additional projects. Right. So right now, I'm looking, I'm looking at so global, global market um, global market pricing. Um, should we pay attention to kind of the, 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 way, the way the gas price is working globally or is this very much a uh, turkey story because they import most of their gas? Um, it's on their doorstep. Uh, is there going to be any kind of fluctuations? I'm trying to think of things that can, like, that could damage your house because obviously producing a small amount of gas at these prices, you make you're making a bit of revenue, but you know I need the scale, right? So first of all, is the is the price a concern for you going forward? What what do you know about? Or what can you tell us about the Turkish market? No, I mean again in the in the Turkish market. We've had ten dollars now. You know, there was of course a big um, increase. Twenty two was the, crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we never reached the same height as um, the European market and so on because it was always it's more muffled. It's more evened out there. And so we just we basically we the price has stayed the same. So it was eleven dollars, and then you know it's now nine and nine dollars and ninety four cents. And the reason is is because only of inflation. Right, only by the change of the Turkish lira, and it's been like that since um, I think it was like December two thousand twenty-three. It's just basically has stayed yeah. the same price. Okay, it's, it's it's yeah. Okay, it's not a, it's not a long time. And just just talk about some of the, the geopolitics around that. Obviously, I think Turkey quite friendly with Russia. So, do, do they buy Russian gas as well? Yeah, so they have a, a portion of Russian gas and also. Um, Iranian and Azerbaijan, you know, and right. so what they do is they they will purchase a volume and they will set a price, and so and then they bring that across the you know the, the border and it's sold in in the country for the set price, and if they're short some, they then have to go on the spot market and fill that, so they usually fill you know eighty eighty percent or eighty five percent of what they think you know, they need and so on. And so we just ride the coattails because there's no, there's not two, right. two different prices. We get the same prices brought in and we pay, we sell our, our gas to electrical generators. So, okay. and, and that's the highest price um, that is paid for the gas. Okay. So you're, and, and you're not involved in that, that marketing or, or sales process. You're just, your partner is managing all of that. Is that right? No, no. So TPAO, they, they, they have their gas and they sell it and we have our gas and we sell it, but it, it turns out it's the same, the, the same buyer. Yeah. yeah. And, Who are we kidding? <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. Okay. And so we just have a, like, it just, we have our facility and at the edge of our facility is a sale line and it goes in there and um, it becomes the property of both house. And then, you know, the buyers buy it, you know, maybe 20 miles or 50 miles or a hundred miles away and that's how they they accommodate they accommodate it and work it out. Okay, okay. So steady as she goes, and, and pardon, pardon all the boating uh, cliches today, but steady as she goes is is the idea, and and ramp it up eventually. So that this is to be clear, this is revenue. It's, it's not profit. This is kind of like you will be investing, reinvesting this back into 
um, the works, the op operation, um, when you've been able to um, show steady state production for a while, you've got a few other options in terms of increasing the the the, the, the scale of, of the opportunity in front of you, should we say. But ultimately, people are looking to invest in big companies with blue sky potential, et cetera. So with regards to some of the other, and I'm sorry to skip, if there's anything else you feel you need to let people know on this part of the business, which is the kind of rescue mission, let me know. Otherwise, I'm kind of interested in what's happening with the rest of the portfolio um, where the, the, I guess the, the size of the price increases significantly. Certainly, that's where it's been advertised in the past. What can you tell us about the rest of the portfolio? Yeah, I mean, we have the the one oil field was again, it's 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 small as it's Sendari, and um, and that's about 100, 135 barrels of oil per day, and that pretty well pays all the costs in Turkey. And we we were involved in a farm out, and it's the the Gabar area. And it gets a little complicated because we could not um, come up with the money to drill the. We paid for the seismic. We shot the seismic, so we have have the the seismic. But they had to have two wells drilled by uh, the end of 2024. So the owner of the block got a like a turnkey service company, and they will drill the first two wells, and they'll earn 20%. Um, and and then, but the owners they they keep saying that you know they're still interested in in what we can do, and once these two wells are drilled, we're still in the in the process of a uh, dialogue. The other part of it is is that if they're not successful, they don't earn, right? That, that's what I've been told. I haven't seen the the contract, and it's a turnkey. And it's a very difficult area to to drill, so we'll see if they mechanically can can drill it. And they didn't use the seismic; they just um, dead reckoned uh, the locations. So there's there's still that one, and those are really um, fairly large, like 300, 400 million barrel potential type fields. And the most prospective is the is the eastern block, but there's two blocks to the west that we we would not have an issue. Um, re-initiating a farm in, except in there it's like 20 or 30 or 40 million barrel fields. So that's still still um, in the works, but it's gone down a different uh, route. Right, okay. So there may be some value in the future, maybe. Um, so what do you do about that if that doesn't advance? Are you, are you, is it a case of head down and let's stick with kind of getting getting recovering? Or have you got your head up looking at other opportunities? Because and, and if so, do you think the market would give you, you know, would 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 back you? Yeah. No. So here's here's what I like. My impression, or what initially what we were doing, or what I was going to do, is SASB was a good asset and would give us a share value of about a buck, right? And it would be the engine that that generates revenue to look for a larger project that has a bigger impact. And um, that is still my still my concept. So we went through a survival mode. I think once we start getting the production up and people start seeing our um, upside that we have when we start getting the seismic out and so on, we'll bring the share value back up and then get into a stable footing and then use that again to look for a um, bigger impact type type project, right? Okay. Okay. And, and you know, believe it or not, like Turkey, Turkey has got a lot of, um, a lot of potential. Like, so when I first went into Turkey, I thought, okay, it's, it's really been looked at like most of Europe and so on. But the fact is that when you, you can see in the Gabar area where they're starting to find, you know, hundred million barrel fields and they're finding discoveries every well. <clears throat> and also when I look at other areas, there are complete basins that, have really good reservoir rock, <clears throat> excuse me, and have oil staining on surface and don't have any wells on it. So there's a lot of potential left left in Turkey. Okay, because well, I, I guess it's important to kind of address the the, the issue of the overhang, right? Because the the stock decline was fairly you know, rapid, right? It, it happened re real quick, as, you know, for, for all the reasons you stated um, today. I think you probably laid out a good case as to 
why you've solved the problem. You very quickly worked out what the problem was, but you've, you've solved the problem. It, you've, you've shown that it, it, it now flows. The, the water issue is less of an issue. Um, like it's a constant battle, et cetera. But you're going to have this overhang from people who maybe bought in at a buck, one buck fifty, et cetera. And they're going to be, they're hanging on only because they don't want to realize their losses. Um, they're hanging on because not a, not a lot of liquidity, right? For, for lots of reasons, you've got a lot of people in the stock, perhaps well underwater. It's not unusual. It's happened a lot over the last three, four years across all, all mining and natural resources. I get it, but it's a problem that you're going to face quite soon. And what's your message to that audience in terms of what the recovery looks like, um, what they should be valuing, maybe what new investors might be valuing going forward? Um, and for you to be able to say, like, let's hang on past the threshold where you think you might want to dump stock in the market and may maybe some people will and maybe we'll rotate retail investors out, the eternal problem. Um, but why should they give you time to breathe and kind of prove that you can get back to the thesis and delivery of that thesis that and the idea that you have? Yeah, I mean, again, like you say, there's like two two families of investors or the initial, initial investors, which I was one of them. And and now there is a lot of shares moving and people are getting in at the, at the lower price, price. And then during the time when you know, the share price was high. And as it went down, I went and I purchased more shares and I converted a lot of my uh, wages and so on into shares. So I went and, you know, 31 cents a share, then 20 cents and then nine cents. So I've actually now have a lower price base and, and that's the way I look at it. And so for people who, who got in at a higher price, nine cents is not is not realistic right it's it's just way too low and and the thing is to look at our production so after we produce for a month and we're going to try to get the, the news release out because that's the whole key right now is stable production right so one month two months three months and i think as we slowly add so we go like you know two million a u.s a month the two and a half to three million and we're starting to slowly go up. They need to hang on to their shares, and and this is the ones that got in at the same time when when I initially got in, to recoup some of their their investment, right? Yeah, but they maybe not everyone's average down um, like like you have this, you know, and maybe some some you know, burden hands or with more than two in the bush, it might be it might be worth them sort of checking out and, and moving on. What do you what do you do in instances like that? Because clearly, at these prices, you're going to tell me, like all CEOs do, you're, you're undervalued. If you look at the revenue flow that's coming here and your ability to potentially still deliver on your on your idea, um, well, where, where are those new investors coming from? So, I mean, you can look at the value, like I say, by um, SASB. And, like, I don't – last time I'm – you know, maybe I was over-optimistic. I said the shares are going to be worth, you know, over a buck and so on just by an SCSB. And we're now again with, you know, a float of about 250. So, you know, I look at it and I say, you know, it should be worth, worth you know, 50 cents to, to a buck, like in that range. I mean, if I'm making 25 million a year, right? And right now we're at 14, 14 million. And so when we get to that stage, then they have to make the decision whether they want to wait until we bring in another, a larger impact property, right? Because I, I think SASB is only going to give it a, a certain amount of uh, value. What's that mean? We only can drill so many wells from the platform, right? And we only can reach out. So an example would be we have, um, you know, five, five, six wells producing right now. And when we look at other slots and so on, maybe we can up that to... 12 17 wells after that we are now talking maybe um additional tripods you know which are big capital investment type type things and so you know you're looking at maybe what the maximum we could produce is maybe um, 17 wells in that order like i don't know for a fact because that's why we're looking at um <clears throat> like doing side tracks potentially in one of the longer boreholes we could put in like uh you know, two sidetracks. So we have like 
three producing boreholes from the same the same same well. Okay, look, I, I guess the proofs in the in, in the pudding. Uh, I get you know, show me, don't tell me. Um, when do we get to hear from you next? Because I think one one of the things people throw at you is like obviously you haven't been able to talk to the market much in the last year because there's mm-hmm. there's not much to say, but also you also have to get on with it, right? Um, even but even before that, so sort of talking to the market was a was a was a rare treat. So moving forward, given what you've got going on now, what how often can the market, can your shareholders hope to hear from you? And you know, and, and what sort of things will you be focusing on? Yeah, again, because we have, as a company, we have focused now so much on the velocity string, and we have said that it's going to be the saving grace, and it'll give us, you know, maybe an uptick in production, because we'll bring wells that are not producing, we'll bring them on, and the key part also is have a stable production. We need to convey that to the investors as it is as being successful. So an example would be, Right now, we have the velocity strings in, um, you know, two of the well, three of the wells, because with Akachoka 3, we, no, we now have it open. The other two are still not open yet. And um, and so we'll be opening them up in, you know, next um, two weeks or so. Starting now, we need to make sure we get that information out so there isn't a conversation out there that, oh, it's not working. Uh, we're not getting the gas. And I think what investors really need to look is, are we as a company stabilizing the production, right? That's the most important key at this point. Forget looking at other properties or any of that type of stuff. Right now, the most important fundamental savior for the company is we spent this money. We've got these six wells. We got a reserve there. We say we had this issue. We now say we solved it. We have to prove and show that it is solved. And how we do that is by saying, here's our production for this week. Here's our production for this week. And it's stabilized. And this is what it is at. And how much you sell it for. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. I look forward to that. I, I can't like I can't argue. Like, you know, I think you were very clear what the problem was early on. And you you know, point was, you know, show me, don't tell me. You've had to prove it, proved it, but we now need to prove it in a sustained way. So look. Uh, I'm going to give you a chance uh, to prove that uh, to us. Um, please stay in touch. Let us know how you get on and please communicate to the market more regularly because um, I think people want to give you a chance uh, to succeed uh, for sure and you know get back to delivering that original idea. All right, appreciate your time today. Okay, yeah, thank you.